Good day. I hope you are doing well. By the way, I'm Alexis Rodriguez. And today, I'm gonna discuss about coulometry. Here's the outline of my presentation. To begin, let me start with a short introduction. Coulometry is a group of electrochemical techniques in analytical chemistry. It is named after Charles Augustin de Coulomb, a French military engineer and physicist best known as the eponymous discoverer of what is now called Coulomb's Law, the description of the electrostatic force of attraction and repulsion. The SI unit of electric charge, the Coulomb, with the symbol C, was named in his honor in 1880. In coulometric methods, the quantity of electrical charge required to convert a sample of an analyte quantitatively to a different oxidation state is measured. Coulometric and gravimetric methods share the common advantage that is, the proportionality constant between the quantity measured and the analyte mass is calculated from accurately known physical constants which can eliminate the need for calibration with chemical standards. In contrast to gravimetric methods, coulometric procedures are usually rapid, and do not require that the product of the electrochemical reaction be a weighable solid. Now, let's dig deeper into the working principles behind coulometry. First let us define what is an electric charge. Electrical charge, with the unit C, is the basis of the other electrical quantities, such as, current, voltage, and power. The charge, on an electron, and proton, is defined as 1.6022 times 10, to the negative 19 coulombs. A rate of charge flow, equal to 1 coulomb per second, is the definition of one ampere of current. Thus, a coulomb can be considered as that charge carried by a constant current of one ampere for one second. The charge Q that results from a constant current of I amperes operated for T seconds is expressed in equation one. For a variable current, small i, the charge is given by this integral in equation 2. Now, let me introduce you to another foremost scientist in history, who contributed greatly to the study of electromagnetism, and electrochemistry, Michael Faraday. Faraday discovered the underlying principles behind electromagnetic induction, diamagnetism, and electrolysis. The Faraday, with the symbol F, named in honor of Michael Faraday, is the quantity of charge that corresponds to 1 mole, or 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 electrons. You may recall, that each electron has a charge of 1.6022 times 10 to the power of negative 19 coulombs. Thus, the Faraday, is equal to 96,485 coulombs, per mole. Furthermore, Faraday's law, relates, the number of moles of the analyte A, N sub A, to the charge Q. This is given by equation 3, where N sub A is equal, to the number of moles of the analyte, Q is the charge, which could also be derived using equation 1 or 2, N, is the number of moles of electrons in the analyte half reaction, and F, is the Faraday's constant. Having these definitions, we are now able to calculate, the mass of a chemical species that is formed at an electrode, by a current of known magnitude. This is the core principle of coulometric methods of analysis. Here, is a sample problem for you to apply the working equations involved in coulometry. 
Feel free to pause this video to practice your skills. To continue, two methods have been developed that are based on measuring the quantity of charge. First, there is controlled potential or potentiostatic coulometry, and then there is also what we call controlled current coulometry, more often called coulometric titrimetry. Potentiostatic methods are performed with the potential of the working electrode being maintained at a constant value relative to a reference electrode throughout the electrolysis. In controlled potential coulometry, the electrolysis current is recorded as a function of time to give a curve similar to curve B in the figure. The analysis is then completed by integrating the current time curve to obtain the charge and from Faraday's law, the amount of analyte. Coulometric titrations are similar to other titrimetric methods in that the analyses are based on measuring the combining capacity of the analyte with a standard reagent. In the coulometric procedure, the reagent consists of electrons and the standard solution is a constant current of known magnitude. Electrons are added to the analyte via the direct current or to some species that immediately reacts with the analyte until an end point is reached. At that point, the electrolysis is discontinued. The amount of analyte is determined from the magnitude of the current and the time required to complete the titration. The magnitude of the current in amperes is analogous to the molar concentration of a standard solution and the time measurement is analogous to the volume measurement in conventional titrimetry. A fundamental requirement for all coulometric methods is 100% current efficiency, that is, each Faraday of electricity must bring about chemical change in the analyte equivalent to one mole of electrons. Note that 100% current efficiency can be achieved without direct participation of the analyte in electron transfer at an electrode. Earlier, I have introduced two types of coulometric methods. I will be discussing the instrumentation behind each of those method. Starting with, controlled potential coulometry. The instrumentation for potentiostatic coulometry consists of an electrolysis cell, a potentiostat, and a device for determining the charge consumed by the analyte. These figures illustrate two types of cells that are used for potentiostatic coulometry. The first figure consists of a platinum gauze working electrode, a platinum wire counter electrode, and a saturated calomel reference electrode. The counter electrode is separated from the analyte solution by a salt bridge that usually contains the same electrolyte as the solution being analyzed. The salt bridge is needed to prevent the reaction products formed at the counter electrode from diffusing into the analyte solution and interfering. The second type of cell shown in the figure is a mercury pool type. A mercury cathode is particularly useful for separating easily reduced elements as a preliminary step in an analysis. In addition, however, it has found considerable use for the coulometric determination of several metallic cations that form metals soluble in mercury. In these applications, little or no hydrogen evolution occurs, even at high applied potentials because of the large overvoltage of hydrogen on mercury. In controlled potential coulometry, a potentiostat with this design is often used. Generally, however, the potentiostat is automated and equipped with a computer or an electronic current integrator that gives the charge in coulombs necessary to complete the reaction, such as shown in this figure. Now, let's go over to controlled current coulometry or coulometric titration. 
The equipment required for a cooler metric titration includes a source of constant current from 1 to several hundred milliamperes, a titration cell, a switch, a timer, and a device for monitoring current. As shown in the figure, moving the switch to position 1 simultaneously starts the timer and initiates a current in the titration cell. When the switch is moved to position 2, the electrolysis and the timing are discontinued. With the switch in this position, however, current continues to be drawn from the source and passes through a dummy resistor that has about the same electrical resistance as the cell. This arrangement ensures continuous operation of the source, thus aiding in maintaining a constant current. The constant current source for a cooler metric titration is an electronic device capable of maintaining a current of 200 milliamperes or more that is constant to a few hundredths percent. Such constant current sources are available from several instrument manufacturers. The electrolysis time can be measured very accurately with a digital timer or a computer based timing system. This figure shows a typical cooler metric titration cell consisting of a working electrode at which the reagent is produced and a counter or auxiliary electrode to complete the circuit. The working electrode used to generate reactants in situ is often referred to as the generator electrode. It is usually a platinum rectangle, a coil of wire, or a gauze cylinder with a relatively large surface area, to minimize polarization effects. The counter electrode is usually isolated from the reaction medium, by a sintered disc or other porous medium, to prevent interference by the reaction products from this electrode. Cooler metric titrations, like their volumetric counterparts, require a means for determining when the reaction between analyte and reagent is complete. Generally, the endpoint indicators described in volumetric methods are applicable to cooler metric titrations as well. For example in the titration of iron 2 plus, an oxidation reduction indicator, such as 110 phenanthrolene, can be used. As an alternative, the endpoint can be determined potentiometrically or amperometrically. These are used in Carl Fischer titrators. Furthermore, some cooler metric titrations utilize a photometric endpoint. In general, coulometry may be used for the quantitative analysis of both inorganic and organic compounds. At this juncture, we will discuss some of the applications of coulometric methods. Controlled potential coulometric methods have been used to determine more than 55 elements in inorganic compounds. Methods have been described for the deposition of more than two dozen metals at a mercury cathode. The method have also been used in the nuclear energy field for the relatively interference-free determination of uranium and plutonium. Controlled potential coulometry also offers possibilities for the electrolytic determination and synthesis of organic compounds. For example, trichloroacetic acid and picric acid are quantitatively reduced at a mercury cathode, whose potential is suitably controlled. Coulometric measurements permit the determination of these compounds, with a relative error of a few tenths of a percent. Now, we go over to the applications of coulometric titration. As reported in many literatures, coulometric titrations have been developed for all types of volumetric reactions. For example, in neutralization titrations, hydroxide ion can be generated at the surface of a platinum cathode, immersed in a solution containing the analyte acid. Whereas, hydrogen ions generated at the surface of a platinum anode, 
can be used for the cooler metric titration of strong, as well as weak bases. Cooler metric titrations of acids are much less susceptible to the carbonate error encountered in volumetric methods. Cooler metric titrations with EDTA are carried out by reduction of the amine mercury 2 plus EDT chelate at a mercury cathode. Because the mercury chelate is more stable than the corresponding complexes of calcium, zinc, lead, or copper, complexation of these ions occurs only after the ligand has been freed by the electrode process. Several precipitating reagents can be generated coulometrically. The most widely used of these is the silver ion, which is generated at a silver anode. Coulometric titrations have also been developed for many, but not all, redox titrations. This table reveals that a variety of redox reagents can be generated coulometrically. For example, the coulometric generation of bromine forms the basis for a large number of coulometric methods. Here is a short video involving the use of coulometry, specifically coulometric titration, in the determination of water or moisture in liquid samples using Carl Fischer titration. At the rear of the unit are the power switch, the power inlet, the fuses and the RS-232 and USB connections. At the top and front are the printer, connections for the electrodes, the titration vessel holder and the front panel. To assemble the glassware, start by placing the titration vessel in the holder. Next, take the electrode leads and attach them to the generator and detector electrodes and then locate the electrodes on the titration vessel. For more detail on this or any other aspect of the Aquamax KF moisture meter, please refer to the user manual, which is available on the GR Scientific website. The injection scepter is fitted into the plastic screw cap connectors and located onto the injection ports of the titration vessel. The drying tube is then filled and fitted. Before adding the chemicals, remove the assembled glassware to avoid spillage on the Aquamax KF moisture meter. Remove the injection port and the drying tube and insert the stirrer bar. Add the full 100 ml bottle of reagent using the supplied funnel and reconnect the injection scepter. Take the cathode reagent, snap the vial, which has a safety snapper already fitted, and pour the reagent into the inner chamber of the generator electrode. Reconnect the drying tube, relocate the glassware onto the Aquamax KF moisture meter, and connect the electrode leads onto the appropriate sockets.
to switch the instrument on, connect to the mains electricity supply using the power pack and mains cord. Press the power on switch at the rear of the unit. The instrument will then start to stir automatically and the display will show the model, the software code and what the operator is required to do. All other keypad functions are disabled. Press start as requested by the display. The Aquamax KF moisture meter begins the precondition process showing how many micrograms of water have been titrated, the speed of the titration and the detector signal. After several minutes and as the process advances and the speed reduces, settle any residual moisture more quickly by turning the unit off and gently swirling the vessel. After preconditioning is complete, the Aquamax KF moisture meter will monitor the background drift and then move into the ready mode once this is stable. Once in ready mode, the keypad is enabled and the instrument can be programmed. The program key displays a scrolling list of program parameters beginning with the sample ID number. This can be up to 8 digits in length. To clear an entry, simply press clear. To confirm an entry, press enter. If the sample ID number is the only parameter to be changed, press clear and the unit will return to the ready mode. It's not necessary to scroll through unwanted parameters. The second parameter is recall method. Methods can be stored in memory to avoid reprogramming from scratch. The next parameter is result format. Pressing the decimal point will cycle the format through microgram, ppm, milligrams per kilogram, and percentage. Press enter to select the required format, and then enter again to move to the next parameter. This is calculation mode. The choices here are volume and specific gravity, volume, weight difference, weight and dilution ratio. The Aquamax KF moisture meter will then ask for the values appropriate to the chosen mode. The printer mode parameter gives options for off, for printing every result, or for a full report including time, date, sample number, instrument serial number and so forth. The statistics print parameter will print statistical data from a series of up to 99 results. The background drift print option may be either on or off. Other parameters allow delay times to be programmed, minimum titration times to be set and the sensitivity to be changed. The beep can be turned off, set to sound when a key is pressed, to the end of titration or to both. The user's language can be selected from a list of all common languages. The generator electrode parameter can be set to either with or without FRIT. This completes the programming and the method that has just been specified can be saved for future reuse. Now, let's talk about primary standards. A primary standard is a highly purified compound that serves as a reference material in titrations and in other analytical methods. The accuracy of a method critically depends on the properties of the primary standard. Important requirements for a primary standard are the following 1. Atmospheric stability. 2. 
Absence of hydrate water so that the composition of the solid does not change with variations in humidity. 3. Modest cost. 4. Reasonable solubility in the titration medium. 5. Reasonably large molar mass so that the relative error associated with weighing the standard is minimized. 6. High purity. Established methods to confirm purity should be available. Very few compounds meet or even approach these criteria. And only a limited number of primary standard substances are available commercially. One of the most important primary standard in analytical chemistry is potassium hydrogen phthalate or KHP. KHP is widely used both as a sedimetric standard for acid and base titration analysis, and as pH standard. The purity of KHP has been determined by precision coulometric titration for about 50 years already. Although a lot of work has been carried out, Precision coulometry is still an extremely extensive method, not suitable for high sample throughput. A fundamental apparatus for coulometry is commercially not available. Therefore, individual experimental designs are applied, which are only possible to build up if special know-how, and knowledge of coulometry procedures, and electrochemistry techniques, are available. Handling such complex equipment, and performing precise measurements, are only manageable by highly trained specialists. To overcome these problems, a special experimental design should be developed, to carry out certification analysis of large batches of KHP standards. One proposal, is to use a commercially available automatic volumetric titration system, in combination with a reliable software, for the endpoint detection. With this, it should be possible to produce equivalent results, with the same accuracy in comparison to a definite method, handled by a fundamental apparatus, for traceable precision coulometry. This idea, was further explored in this study entitled, Purity of Potassium Hydrogen Phthalate, Determination with Precision Coulometric, and Volumetric Titration, a comparison. It was done by Reknagel et al. and published in the journal Analytica Chemica Acta in 2007. The aim of this study was to compare the results of precision coulometric titration with those from precision volumetric titration on the analysis and certification of a specific KHP reference material. The methodology is divided into two parts. First, is the purity determination using precision coulometry. Then, it is followed by purity analysis using volumetric titration. For the coulometric titration experiment, the determinations were carried out using the system given in Figure 1. This system includes a titration cell with the following specifications. The precision coulometer used, was an electrochemical computerized system, that consists of a constant current source, an indication unit, a valve unit, and a piston burette. For the measurements, four calibrated devices were used. These include an analytical microbalance, a timer, a multimeter, and a resistor. The experimental procedure involves drying of the sample, performing the initial, main, and final titrations, and calculation of purity, and measurement uncertainty. For the volumetric titration experiment, Titrations were carried out using a modular automatic titration system, consisting of a sample changer, and a dispensing unit. For potentiometric endpoint detection, a combined pH glass electrode, and silver-silver chloride reference system, was used. The experimental procedure, involves, 
the preparation of the titrant, calibration of the apparatus, drying of the sample, titration of the sample, and calculation of purity, and measurement uncertainty. Now we go to the results. Table 1A shows the results of the nine cooler metric determinations of three different bottles of the investigated KHP batch and the mean, as well as the standard deviation of the mean. Calculation of the uncertainty for the cooler metric determination is shown in Table 2. The results of the volumetric determination are given in Table 3. For each of the 35 bottles, the means of seven single determinations are listed together, with the corresponding absolute and relative standard deviations. There was no hint for any inhomogeneity of the material. Meanwhile, Table 4 shows potential contributions to the combined uncertainty of the results received from volumetric titration. The different results for both methods used for the determination of the mass fraction of KHP are summarized in Table 5. In conclusion, Acidimetric purity of KHP is statistically not different from 100% purity. Very precise volumetric titration, with regards to bias and repeatability, using optimized procedures shows within uncertainties the same results as measurements with precision coulometry. Whereby the volumetric method is calibrated with a certified reference material and the cooler metric determination rely on traceable SI quantities. The purity of KHP is the same, with slightly different uncertainties, while the throughput of the volumetric titration is significantly higher than that of cooler metric titration. We have come to the last part to discuss the advantages and disadvantages of coulometry. Cooler metric titration is often compared to volumetric titration. Here are several significant advantages of the coulometric method. Coulometric titrations eliminate the problems associated with the preparation, standardization, and storage of standard solutions. This advantage is particularly significant with reagents such as chlorine, bromine, and titanium 3 plus iron, which are sufficiently unstable in aqueous solution to seriously limit their value, as volumetric reagents. Their use in a coulometric determination is, however, straightforward, because they are consumed as soon as they are generated. Coulometric methods also excel, when small amounts of analyte have to be titrated, because tiny quantities of reagent are generated with ease and accuracy, through the proper choice of current. With conventional titrations, it is inconvenient and often inaccurate to use very dilute solutions and small volumes. A further advantage of the coulometric procedure is that a single constant current source provides reagents for precipitation, complex formation, neutralization, or oxidation reduction titrations. Among the disadvantages of coulometry in general are the following 1. Relatively higher cost. 2. Requires highly trained personnel. 3. Long setup time. 4. Limited life of cell. 5. Low sample throughput. Unfortunately, because it is usually not part of a multi channel analyzer, and highly mechanized coulometers are not available, coulometry can only be used for the measurement of a small number of samples. Well, that's all for today. I hope you have learned something new from this presentation. Thank you for watching, and see you again next time. This is Alexis, signing off.